every maker should keep a journal or a sketchbook. Something like The Grail Diary of Dr. Jones Sr., a book that's filled with sketches and ideas, as well as your recollections and bits of ephemera you collect along the way. It's with no irony that I suggest that the contents of such a diary really do end up being clues to a life's quest. My journaling practice began in the early 2000s with Julia Cameron's book, The Artist's Way. She prescribes what she calls morning pages. This is a longhand, 30-minute timed exercise, best practice first thing in the day. It gets your brain running out ahead of your tired hand, and before you know it, your mind jumps into a new mode where it's crafting surprising metaphors to try to get its legs back under itself. That's been the most fascinating and important part of it for me. It happens very near the 20 minute mark. All of a sudden, I'm practically hijacked by an artistic algorithm, compressing my thoughts, conscious and otherwise, into beautiful efficiencies that expand back out into paragraphs of implied material when later revoiced. Those effective bits often become the sound bites of my communication with others as they're better crafted than anything I could have set out to do intentionally. I have lots of techniques and curious things I try to work into my journal, including drawings, rubber stamps, and postage stamps, bookmarks, wristbands, ticket stubs, and a lot more. One of the most prevalent things that can be used to populate the book with a certain shorthand are stickers. I just got back from WorkbenchCon in Atlanta, and stickers were the currency of the makers in attendance. On a day like today, as I fondly recollect new friends and acquaintances, I may not have any earth-shattering metaphors (laughs) pop up, but I also enjoy simply recording an emotional snapshot of great times like these. Sometimes I'll just run a sticker off the page, keeping the minimal, legible, or enjoyable amount, and then trim the sticker to match the edge of the page in a full bleed layout. When collecting stickers and other things into a book, you've got to be careful to distribute them around the pages to keep the book closing somewhat correctly, though I tend to think if it closes right, I'm not doing it right. While a desirable mass of things collected into a journal might make it never close flat, you don't want too many things deep down in the fold or they'll collectively act as a fulcrum and break the binding of the book. So whenever I do cross the fold with a sticker, I'll cut it in half to reduce the thickness that the fold in the vinyl would add, and that relieves some of the strain on the binding. One of the first people I met at WorkbenchCon was Joe from DeKind Designs. I wish I got one of his cool stickers. Maybe I can sketch his logo. We met Just having come through the registration line, each of us wondering where we could set down our convention swag for the opening night's mixer, I was immediately struck by what a kind person Joe was. He had a friendly demeanor he carried through the whole event. And while he was super humble and nothing about Joe necessarily screams front man, his friendliness was so potent and his smile so indelible, I could imagine him in some irrepressibly positive endeavor like the lead singer of a rockabilly band or something. I frequently kiss cut or alter the stickers I'm putting in the journal so I can fit more of them in the book or preserve more space for my wraparound text. I like these Teflon coated Fiskers which are designed for cutting materials that have an adhesive backing. Steph and Vicky at Mother Daughter Projects now DIY for homeowners, had to be the most buoyant and encouraging people I met at the con, and I was talking with Steph about keeping a journal when she suggested this series. I also found out she has a Lego room. Enough said. The gals at WorkbenchCon were my favorites to hang with. The first night I was fortunate to join a whole group of them hanging out in the lobby of the Marriott Marquis. This included Kate of Bow and Harrow, who makes things out of the lumber from old film and television sets, a perfect fusion of making and her production background. I met Micah from Bear Dog Designs and Tamara Robertson of Mythbusters, a fellow film and TV maker. I really hope to see her again at North Carolina Comic Con, but I couldn't make it down there with the current load of client work. 
That whole group of us went out for dinner the second night, along with Craig from Barefoot Forge, and I got to sit next to Nicole Hubert of Nicole Hubert Design in Wisconsin. She was one of the most down-to-earth people I met at the entire show, and a designer as well as maker. Kim McIntyre in Seattle has such a huge heart for social justice. Maybe I can go see her shop when I go out and see my brother. Angie from House Becoming a Home has been so generous in following up since the con with best wishes for our channel. Thanks, Angie. On the final night, I got to meet Jen Schachter. Her We the Rosies venture is a giant collaborative sculpture endeavor assembled from 3D printed parts shipped to her from all over the world. I was familiar with that project from a recent episode of Adam Savage's Tested Channel. Evan and Caitlin were at Workbench Con and they had their hands full. I watched them walk into the hall on the first night and they didn't get 10 feet into the room before fielding questions and adoration from a small mob. What a charming duo to come along in making, proving that laughter is the best tool for the make-fail cycle. Man, do I need to get back in touch with that part of my young maker self. They were so sweet to take so much time with so many people. Jimmy DeRest is another one of those people who I'm sure has a hard time finding a moment's rest in an environment like that. He was kind enough, though, to have me join his crew for dinner the final night of the convention. Instead of a sticker, Jimmy had this postcard he made on the letterpress he restored in a nice series of videos on his YouTube channel. And he's since released his vlog number 82, where we can literally see these postcards coming off the press. While hanging out with that crew, I had the pleasure of meeting Tyler Bell, a welding apprentice of sorts from Jimmy's studio. Tyler works for Boeing in Seattle, so he'll be getting an annoying call from me next time I'm out there to see if there's anything I can do that I haven't already done at the plant tour in Everett or at the Museum of Flight at Boeing Field. Tyler also built a serious model rocket launch control panel, not unlike the one we made years back or the one we hope to reveal soon on our channel. MJ was a vision, dressed head to toe in all black, in an outfit that's part spacesuit, part rock star, with a pair of glasses that were Andy Warhol in a heads-up display. With afro as aura, she looked like a superhero. Her camera setup was nothing short of tactical. Her GoPro was strapped to her pack like the load-bearing equipment of a commando, leaving her hands free for her primary, the DSLR. Looking like she might have just stepped off a MotoGP bike, she stood out in the crowd like Phasma from The Force Awakens. With a brand new YouTube channel promising to explore music, motorcycles, and making, photography too, I can't wait to see what's next from MJ. I'd fill the whole journal if I included all the fun people and cool stickers I got at work BenchCon. I had fun talking to and partying with Dustin and Kat and both Caleb from Make and Caleb from You Can Do This Too. That Caleb just put up a video about a Lego table he made for his kids. You know, getting our Lego Rapid prototyping studio set up here has got to get moved up on the priority list. The last night of WorkbenchCon, I closed the joint with Jay and Jamie of Wicked Makers and Stephanie from Uncommon Outpost, who we hope to see on a visit here in Richmond soon. Simply put, I found a great community there, one that anybody would be lucky to count themselves a part of, so I hope I can get back to work, BenchCon. Until then, I'll fill this book with these developing relationships and the endeavors that we hope to share with these inspiring makers. 